Welcome to your weekly program, Balahdan, a show with an accent for those without one. News about in Europe, uh, you know, uh, Europeans are wage, waging, uh, you know, jihad against the hijab in France, prohibiting, uh, criminalize hijab in France and Switzerland and all of that. Uh, of all places, Switzerland are criminalized burqa and hijab, and anybody who will wear that will get, I think, a lot of fine and jail. I mean, Switzerland is a country that has harbor criminal mass murder and dictator and, and putting hijab on billions of dollars uh, from money laundering. Now they are, they are making a statement against, uh, uh, you know, Muslims' uh, 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 customer and dress. The story that comes on Fox News or comes on press releases from the FBI, Somalis, kids going to the Shabab and arresting of a terrorist and all of that. But uh, we have an organization here trying to amplify and tell the story of the Muslim community that we didn't hear about it. And we have here Fedwa Wazwas. She is with Engage Minnesota. And I like the name. Engage Minnesota is a voice of Minnesota uh, Muslims, Minnesotans Muslims. And those are, uh, you know, they are doing their job quietly. Welcome to Bilahdan. Uh, uh, Fedwa, is, what drives this organization? This organization, just to let you know, started off in the past as just a writing, just writing blogs. So we started off like early in, in the mid 2006, something around that mm -hmm. time. And we were just writing blogs and at times we were just uh, sharing our views on issues that were taking place about Muslims in Minnesota and other national issues. Uh, this has led to myself becoming a blogger for uh, the Star Tribune. It has also opened doors for others to another person to become a blogger. And then it also opened a door for Hanadi, and uh, not Hanadi, excuse me, Hani Ham, um, uh, ha brother Hani to also be part of the NPR, like constant kind of writer and, and, and a blogger as well. So it opened doors for kind of people to kind of interact with the, with the mainstream media. Oh. Our aim is not to kind of be our own little media place where we just talk to ourselves. Mm -hmm. But as the name says, Engage Minnesota, it's a platform where Muslims at the intersection of the Muslim community and the greater community are able to engage with the greater community. But we engage by owning our narrative and owning our stories, and we don't allow ourselves to be framed where we're constantly trying to prove our humanity. Yeah, like we're good Muslims. The, the uh, idea of representation, who represents yes us yes and uh, yeah. but we also don't want to just speak about muslim issues because we're part of the great the greater community so we also want to tackle some of those issues that are part of the greater community that also impact us and we might feel that we can bring some benefit or some help or some contribution to the table and that's some of the criticisms that were given usually not just muslim but the minority or whatever that they are wrapped up of their own issues and now you t here in your uh, in your uh, one of the, your uh, groups or core member is uh, talking about environment which yes. is uh, this is a mainstream issue yes we invited muhammad jiwa and he's an organizer with the minnesota interfaith power and light mm -hmm. so he deals a lot with uh, climate change and he deals a lot with issues that affect the environment and we're having him kind of work and lead and amplify that type of work mm -hmm. on, our, on our platform and to invite people who are interested in that type of work. Uh, but he's not doing it as part of a Muslim organization. See, he's yeah. working, again, at the inner, he's working with other... Yeah, with the mainstream with the, with the, organization. Yeah, with the mainstream organization. So we're not like working on our own I in see. our own little world. Uh, it's, it's not Muslims an exclusive engaged. Club. Yeah, it's not an exclusive club. We're engaged with the greater community. Mm -hmm. And we're working with the greater community about issues that benefit all of us. So what are the challenges they are facing now? I mean, I, I know this is, sounds good and paper and everything. But I think also the, the community at large, sometimes they, they box you in in, some, in in certain issues. They won't let you talk about mainstream issues. They won't let you amplify those mainstream stories. Um, it's yes, it's in, in both areas. You know, yeah. it's uh, our own community has to be challenged and the greater community has to be challenged. And I was invited to be part of a panel on the, Univer the University of Minnesota regarding the, the France and the Hepto, Charlie Hepto affair and about liber freedom of speech and, and liberty. And 
and the way that engagement sort of wants to enter the conversation is by saying, yeah, we're going to challenge, but we're also open to chal being challenged. I see. So we're not going to allow ourselves to be boxed in or box anybody in. We're not here to fix I see. the greater community. We don't like boxes. Yeah, we, we, we don't like boxes, but we also are not coming in with the, we have all the solutions to your problems. We are open to shopping yeah. for ideas. Yeah, we're here to explore, we're, we're here to invest, we're here to contribute, but we're also open to being challenged as well. And, uh, uh, you know, when, uh, you know, the biggest issue now that facing Muslim in America is terrorism and, and uh, you know, the most obvious one to get in the brunt of Islamophobia and all of this are women. Yes. So how do you dealing with that? As a woman yourself, you're wearing traditional clothes yourself. So what are the challenges are facing uh, Muslim women and, and that you can address in your... Uh, we, we address it, um, but we try not to come into a point of, you know, everyone is different. Some people feel like they have to kind of worry about what people think about hijab. Mm -hmm. and, and I maybe was judgmental in the past, but my perception is I can't really come in as a woman wearing hijab worrying about what people think about my wearing hijab because that's kind of like how oppressors think. Yeah. They're worried about their image. You I, know? See. I wear it, it's my choice. Mm -hmm deal with it you know i'm not here to like make you like it or yeah. make you approve of the fact that i like it um if it transgresses into boundaries where it is hurting you yeah. abusing you then let's have a conversation I see. but if it's not engage you know if it's not transgressing your boundaries in any way what you think of it or don't think of it is really you know an it's irrelevant your matter it's your issue it's your issue you got to deal with it uh -huh. and i had to say that straight out in a social worker conference because one person felt like it was, a, it was an oppression. And I said, you're entitled to that opinion. I'm not here to change your opinion, mm -hmm. but you're not entitled to force that opinion upon me. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think the problem exists. I said, you can say that's oppression, but you cannot force me to believe that. Yeah, or even engage in it. Yes. You know, I mean, what, you know, when you look at uh, here, your, uh, I don't know if this is mission or vision, we have more similarity than difference by acknowledging the uniqueness of our individual faith and cultural communities, being open to learn from one another, engaging in an honest dialogue, building positive relationship in our neighborhood, and celebrating our rich diversity. We're creating welcome and, and safe environment. Isn't that, that what America is all about? It is what it's about, but at times, you know, there's always uh, a challenge, you know, where some voices want you to. Uh, they want to rob you of your individuality or your indiv mm -hmm. or what makes you even unique. within the, the Muslim community. even within the Muslim community yeah. you know you see that kind of not uh, a monolithic uh, yes it's not monolithic at all and so we're trying to kind of point that out uh, but not by having one person represent all but having the various voices and diverse voices be representative on our platform I see. I mean, do you, do you think uh, you know it's that challenge is becoming more challenging in the last few years because of you know you talk about islamophobia the election years now and bringing somebody like trump I gotta, well I gotta bring this certain, guy. trump really kind of touched on feelings and uh you might say thoughts that were already there mm -hmm. you know he yeah, just kind of yeah, it's nothing new he just kind of brought it from the shadows yeah, into the light i like that you know, he didn't like kind of create yeah. it. So you've been dealing with that long time ago. Yes. Uh, so that's what really Trump, Trump kind of is, is opening up kind of what's already hidden, but people are afraid because it's not socially acceptable for them yeah. to say it. Uh -huh. What Trump does as a person of influence and, and in, a, in, a, in a position of power as a pres presidential candidate uh -huh is he makes what is socially unacceptable socially acceptable and, and, it, and, and makes it not, not just mainstream, but then it ends up, you know, having its own kind of uh, domino effect where it starts to affect and triple, trickle into other areas. So this could also impact, for example, is the current shooting that, that took place because, you know, his, his rhetoric and the, the, his mentality perpetuate, uh, perpetuates stereotypes, perpetuate. not just of the Muslim community, but other, towards other minorities, and also his way of dealing with problems, building walls, you know, mm -hmm. having this kind of no compassion, no empathy, um, very just want to be tough, wanna, you know, that also has its Bring way of American kind of... greatness again. Yeah, that also again. has its way of kind of 
uh, influencing and contributing to other problems that are starting to service or starting to be amplified as well. Uh, so what project, what project are you working on uh, right now? We're working on various projects right now. Well, one is a disability project, and my niece is kind of leading that project where she's trying to educate the community about various mental Ill, uh, illnesses that, are t that uh, exist as well as particularly autism and how to interact and, and how to basically be inclusive in our community to open doors for people with uh, various mental uh, mm -hmm. Ill illnesses into our community and how to, how to interact and work with them. She has done also work with law enforcement and educators and doing presentations, not just with, our, with the Muslim community, but also the greater community to help them understand how to deal with, with mental uh, illnesses. Um, we have also somebody, Khadr Abdi, who has also done a project for sex trafficking. Mm. Yeah, so she has been working on a project on sex trafficking. I'm not sure if you're also familiar, there was an issue also where one group of like uh, people in the community were caught and it turned out to be, for example, uh, not, all, not all of them, but some of them were turned out to be false, falsely accused of sex trafficking, but there was a Somali group and so she's also involved yeah like that. yeah so she was also worked and involved in but it in doesn't that, that well. I, I know so that sound outrageous but doesn't say that muslim community becoming mainstream yes you know, and, and that's, the, that's the other issue too yeah. we don't want to say that muslims well, cannot do you know that only muslims can do good things yeah um, and i mentioned that we you know we're there are Muslims that deal with drugs. There are Muslims yeah, that issues. Um, mainstream issues. Yes, there are Muslims that are, you know, engage in crimes, uh, and that's why sometimes whenever there's a shooter and he turns out to be Muslim, for example, the one in California, or even the Chattanooga shooter, yeah. we immediately jump into connecting yeah. them to ISIS, or even the, the recent Orlando one. Yeah. We immediately connect them yeah, yeah, to yeah. ISIS, and it, at times it's more assimilated than anybody. Yeah, else and uh, at times there really isn't a connection. No. So, Yemen, uh, I think the, 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 your organization that reflects that our community is, has been evolved and mature in you know, dealing with many Yes, they're issues. doing quite a lot of good work. There's a lot of even, organizations even, that are doing a lot of good work. Even the quality or the kind of work. It's a yes. mainstream uh, uh, issue that everybody is dealing with. Yes. And uh, w with the other uh, organization uh, that you work with, what, what other organization that you work with? And well, I've been working in the past with, for example, some organizations, and, and in particular, starting with restorative justice. Mm -hmm. and, but I had to stop because I took a, a brief period of where I had to focus on my mother's illness. And that's mm -hmm. why now we're coming back and we're bringing back, making this a, a full nonprofit that's functioning. But one of the things that I have, I'm trying to promote in this uh, organization is the work of restorative justice mm -hmm. and organizations, currently Muslim organizations in town that are doing restorative justice work. And we just recently partnered with uh, Umma Project. I don't know if you've ever met Saida Shaido. Uh, no, no. Yeah, so she's also having trainings, particularly for Somali youth, that will be training them to be um, f um, facilitators in restorative justice so that they will be working with law enforcement and I others. See, I see. They'll be able to be as mediators. We'll in, the arm between the community yes. and law enforcement. I think we need that, not the CVE, whatever that was. Yes. So she will be working on those type of projects and I will, we will be amplifying her voice as well as partnering with her as they're doing some of that work. Well, Fadwa, thank you so much. Fadwa was was you guys a uh, big, uh, big family here, and you, you're doing a wonderful job. I mean, that, that name uh, is everywhere, so that's a good thing. Well, thank you so much for coming, and I don't thank know, you shake hands? Thank you. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but that's fine, so you don't stereotype here, that shake hands. Well, Fadwa was was he was uh, uh, engaged in Minnesota, I was trying to tell or amplify the stories uh, that is uh, taking place uh, almost on a daily basis in the Muslim community. We'll see you next week. Assalamu alaikum and God bless you all.